Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Enjoy the Bounty of Planning with Tonisha Taylor. So today I am going to do a review of my planner. Now that we are about midway through March, um, that means we're also um, midway through the first, or actually we're at the end of the first quarter of the year. And so since I haven't been doing a lot of plan with me videos lately because of everything that's been going on in my life, um, and I do, I am going to get back to those, um, I do have a plan for that. <laughs> um, but I wanted to go ahead and just do kind of a flip through of what my planner has been looking like lately um, because I think that those are they're fun they're their videos I like to watch um, to get ideas from people and inspiration so I thought I would do one today so here we go let's get started so uh, I'm going to do this video. I'm going to talk about um, four things. I'm going to talk about this cover, which I absolutely love. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the inserts, the decor, and then the sections that I have going on here. And so, um, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the pens that I have over here. Right now, these are my primary writing utensils that I'm using. So, um, a selection of Tombow uh, dual brush markers. I love these because you can use them as highlighters. If you're an artistic type that likes to color and draw, you can use them for that too. Um, but I use them as highlighters. I, I wish I could draw, oh my gosh. I've always wanted to be able to, and someday when I have time, I'm gonna take some art classes and learn. Um, but I use these just uh, for highlighting. So those. And then right now, what I've been absolutely in, like, total love with lately is using fountain pens. My dad and my grandfather um, loved good pens. Um, my grandmothers did too, but my dad I really learned a love of pens from. And he loved a good fountain pen. My father had amazing penmanship and his calligraphy was absolutely beautiful. Um, and he used to use fountain pens. Uh, and so lately I've been kind of wanting to get back into it, but I haven't been wanting to spend like an, a ton of money, right? And so um, here are some that I've been using lately that are relatively you know inexpensive as fountain pens go um they're not crazy um crazy expensive so all three of these i did purchase from amazon they're all less than 25 dollars um and i did purchase for this one which is the um, Hong, Hong Dang Don. Um, this one I love. I've been using this one the most lately. It's just a white with rose gold. This one does have, you do have the option um, of purchasing different colored inks for this one. And so I've purchased that um, different color ink packet. And I am also going to um, I'm actually gonna purchase another one because I want to use some of those other color inks. So I'm just gonna focus on that. This is a fine um, nib. So I prefer the fine nib. I write pretty small anyway, uh, but I just love how the fine nib looks and you'll see it throughout my planner. And then this one is um, from Wadsworth and Black. Also a fine, um, nib this one right now has blue ink in it uh, which i love this one came with blue or black ink um, and i prefer blue so i put blue in it even though that cap color looks like you should have a black you know black ink in there but 
I don't. Um, and then this one is just um, a, a waterman, right? And so this is like a classic fountain pen. It's one that my grandfather and my father actually both loved as their everyday um, fountain pen. And so it was when I wanted to get start using fountain pens I for an everyday pen. This is the one that I ordered first. Um, I love the blue color ink that Waterman's has. It's so pretty. It's got so much depth and character. It's just beautiful. And so... Um, so that these are the things that I've been in love with lately. So the um, Wadsworth and Black came with a box. And so I actually just store all of them in here when I am not using them. But I'm going to take this one out for right now. So the cover that I am using for this is the Notique stone gray cover in classic size. I absolutely love this thing. Like, I, I love it. <laughs> I don't know y'all why I took so long to get a no tea cover. I just, I guess I was just, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> oh, I honestly don't. And I did purchase i will say i did purchase the um saddle leather cover from cloth and paper um and a, it a classic it does say that if you get the large cover that a classic um size can't fit in it but it's best for a half letter size and that's 100 percent true and if i switch to a half letter size um I'll start using it. I think what I'm gonna end up doing with that one is using it because I do keep a, like a journal where I just do like my spiritual journal um, and I might use that cover for that. But right now, um, I'm just absolutely in love with this Nautique, Nautique vegan leather cover. Again, I got it in the stone gray. I love, and I'll click, I have another video where I, an unboxing video for this. But I, I've been using this now for a few weeks and I love it. I love the rose gold metal detailing in the snap and in the logo. Um, I, I'm one of those people who I don't like things that are like over marked with logos. Um, and so this I really love because unless you're familiar with the brand, you're not going to really see, like kind of see the logos. You're not going to read them unless you're familiar with the brand, right? So the only place where you have the logo is here in this metal detailing on the snap. And then here on the inside, you have the rose gold, the name of the planner. And I love that. Like, that's so high end to me. Um, and it makes me so happy. So, inside the cover, um, and like I said, I have an unboxing video that you can go and watch for all the details. But, um, which I'll tag here. So, here I'm just going to really go more for going over, like, the planner itself. And, like, what's going on with it. Which I think is the most fun right um so i feel like the video got a little dark but maybe not okay um so i did add um this does come with a pen loop here um on the side of the snap and i added a pen loop here this pen loop is um you can just order them multicolor pack from amazon um and i i just added it to the inside now these are adhesive they kind of just stick on i don't know if i can i don't know if maybe i can so you can see in there, I stuck it to the top instead of sticking it here to the bottom, what I would call kind of like the floor. And that's because I still intend to use this um, pocket 
I, you know, even though I don't stick my planner cover in that pocket because I want the cover to cover the paper, I do plan on using this pocket to like stick things in. So I wanted to be able to stick paper in here smoothly without covering the loop if there's paper in here, right? And so I stuck it to this side. So as an example, right, I just have a, a notebook, right? Um, so if I wanted to stick that in there, right, but I wanted it, say if I wanted it to stick out a little bit or if it was a little bigger and it had to stick out a little bit, I want this loop to be on top of the paper. If I had stuck this loop on to the inside on you know the back of this then this paper would be covering the loop when it was inside so sometimes you have to think about these logistics when you're customizing your planner um, and so that was something that i wanted to make sure i mention so you have your pockets what i did here um, i'm going to talk a little bit about next so let me think. I think that was the only thing I added. Yeah, that's the only thing I added um, to the cover itself. Like I said, I have an unboxing video where you can go um, and watch as I talk about sort of the pockets and the sizing and all of that. Um, so next up, inserts. <laughs> so I um, am using a glass cover from... Um, uh, this glass cover is from Fancy Plans, and I'll link them in the description. And then pretty much all of the inserts are from either Fancy Plans or from um, Cloth and Paper. And so I have my Ollie Clip here, which is the Ollie Clip Cloth and Paper um, collab, and this is an affogato. Uh, which I just love that neutral kind of coffee color with this beautiful um, stone gray cover I'm from Notique. It's beautiful. Um, I do have, I'll kind of talk about inserts and decor actually at the same time because I'll kind of go through them as I see them. So these journaling cards that I have just for decor here, um, clipped onto the pockets are from Cloth and Paper. And then this is a, I think a newer sticker book from um, Capital Chic Designs. I just was feeling like I needed a little extra happy in my life. <laughs> Um, I'm not doing a lot of design or like stickers and decor in my planner necessarily anymore. Um, but I just wanted something a little bit new. And so I went to Michael's and picked these up. I actually picked up a couple of new sticker books. So I got, um, whoops, sorry about that. So I got this one, um, which just has like a different kind of like planner stickers in there, like don't stress manifest, um, stay bold, empower, like just sort of words that are kind of um, uh, inspirational. And then I got this one, which is the fitness sticker book um, from um, uh, Capital Chic Designs, which I thought was really cute. And then this one, I just absolutely, I as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta have that one, right? When I was, so all of these I got um, at my local Michaels. And this one is essentially like the year in like, um, like holidays. So um, it's like a her holiday sticker book, which I just, love so of course I had to use some of those March stickers so you'll see these throughout my planner and then I still am using my fancy plans um, stickers as well and so I just have some different boxes and icons from them and then also um, I had to get this, of course, Black Dreams Matter sticker book from um, 
capital chic designs as well and so um i just really thought this was really lovely so these are the stickers you're gonna see more um i'm still using some happy planner stickers uh sometimes not as much though because as you'll see it's not just that i've gone to more minimal planning it's really that because of the way that i was gonna stick these back in my tray back behind the camera um so my planner um and i have on my desk right now um just those things and then i have i also have which let me know in the comments and I might just do like a little desk tour. <laughs> um, but I also have a flower pot that I use for a nine inch diameter flower pot that I use to hold all of my other pens. Um, obviously not the fountain pens, but all the other pens go in that flower pot. Um, so these page flags are from Fancy Plans and they just have four colors, gray, kind of a rose, and then like a taupe color and then white. And I love these little page flags. I just punched it and uh, so that it could go in my planner and I would have them with me whenever I quickly need a page flag. Um, this glass cover is from Fancy Plans as well, and um, this is just a clear, um, you know, plastic cover, and I love it because it allows me to be able to see my decor, but it also allows me to um, keep this white paper, this kind of off-white paper nice um, from scuffs and stuff like that. And then this month I have um, clipped to the front here just the March um, journaling card, clear journaling card, um, which I love because if I have my planner open like this on my desk, which I always have my planner open like this on my desk, um, I just get a nice quick at a glance. And what I did is I just added, and this is actually not this one, it is the... Um, French 75 flag from Cloth and Paper is the flag that I use to just highlight just the date, just so I kind of know where we are in the month. And actually, because we are, because of what I'm filming, I'm gonna go ahead and just move this flag down. Let's start. Actually, let's line that up a little bit better. There we go. Just highlight the last couple of days, or the last week of the month, last two weeks of the month actually, will be highlighted like that. So I love those kind of easy ways of being able to add like a little bit of color and a whole lot of function. So the co this cover um, that I'm using right now, this dashboard, is, as you can see, is from Cloth and Paper. It came in one of the subscription boxes, which I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do know it's available on their website to purchase. I'm just going to stick that back there because I do need to remember to do that. I absolutely love cloth and papers, transparent sticky notes. I love them just because they're such beautiful neutral colors and they're great like as decor and then they're great as like function. And so they're just beautiful. Um, and this one I think is, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's either, this limited edition kind of pink color that they did not label to say what color it is, or it's this cotton color. Um, I think it's actually more this limited edition one. 
So one of the things that I do that I have um, a kind of a habit of is I actually have back here in my notes section, I have just extra sticky notes just on this um, kind of vellum dashboard. Um, or I think it's, no, it's not vellum. This is harder plastic, but it's bendable. Um, so I have them on this dashboard and I just pull them off and use them whenever I need them. And then I just load up with extras when it runs low. But it's nice because it means if I'm not sitting at my desk and I need a sticky note, I have some sticky notes in here to be able to use. So... Along with, like I said, I was going to kind of, in this tour, kind of do like the decor and sections. So this first section is just my cover section. I have, um, as you all know, I, I still kind of use the principles of bullet journaling, even though I don't use a bullet journal anymore. And so one of the principles of bullet journaling is keeping a future log. So this is one that I just created myself on um I just used a word document. Um, so I couldn't find any word of the year um, dashboards that had the word purpose the way that I wanted it. And so I was like, you know what? I can just make this myself and then I can double it for my future log. So purpose is the word that I chose for my year. And then my future log, I just printed out from a free template online. Um, and it will, it's great. I'm definitely going to be using it again in the future because this is the exact layout of the template. And all you have to do is put in the year and then it automatically does the dates for you. Um, if y'all remember what my um, bullet journal future log looked like, this is exactly what it looked like. Except I did all of these calendars, these little mini calendars, I did them all by hand, um, which was quite a lot of work. Um, and I don't really have that kind of time anymore, or maybe even impart that kind of patience. Plus, I just really love the idea of being in a disc bound planner right now. It gives me so much happiness and peace. Like I can't even tell you, but I still wanted my future log and I still wanted it laid out like this. So when I found this template online, I was so happy. Um, so I just printed it out on white presentation paper and cut it down to size um, for my classic planner. Now I still haven't put my name on the This Belongs To page. I need to go back and do that. I actually forgot that I hadn't done that. I kind of wanted to like have like some decor, some kind of plan for this. And I realized I've never done that in a planner before like I've always just put my name on it and like a web my website now or like I've said like if lost please return to and that's pretty much it <laughs> and so I think that's all I really want to do what I might do is um actually do that on the printer and just run it through the printer and say that so I don't know we'll see but this comes from cloth and paper this was um but I think this came in the insert with the monthly calendar, maybe? Um, I actually can't remember. But I wanted to go ahead and put this in here. So, oh, let me say this. In here, I am on Happy Planner Rose Gold Classic Discs. Um, this planner, you can see in my unboxing video, this cover will 100% take the expander discs if you wanted to put expander discs in here um, with no problem. And so I actually may be switching this to expander discs. Um, I, I don't know, I have to kind of wait and see. Um, right now, I'm kind of also sort of, I guess, Franken planning in a way because or catch all maybe catch all planning because I have everything in this one book which is why I'm actually thinking about going to expander discs I was on the classic gold discs but I just love the way the rose gold looks in here um, and I'm really thinking about actually getting ordering again actually the rose gold discs from fancy plans 
because I love those the metal her metal discs and I love that they're really more of a true rose gold they're more of that kind of orangey color versus the rose gold from Happy Planner is more of a lavender kind of color um, and I just think that that the Fancy Plans color the expander discs from Fancy Plans that they'll look good in this planner so that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> so for my sections after sort of the calendar front section, I have my work section. Now in here right now, I'm using top and side tabs in this planner. And so for the top tabs are the sections of the planner. And then the side tabs are the months and then the subject tabs for the notes. So um, these are from um, Cloth and Paper, these top tabs. And this one, I just added a sticker from Happy Plans that says work. And then also in here I have my um, page markers. And I just have two, one in each of the calendar sections. So, and I just put a sticker from Happy Plans that says today. Um, let's see if I can see that. Let's pull it up a little bit. So this one just says today's list and this one, this sticker is from, both of them actually are from the Minimalist sticker book, the 2020 Minimalist sticker book from Happy Plants. So that's that one. And then this one. And I just love like the color, the style of it. It was just, it worked for me. Um, and it makes me happy. So um, in each calendar section, um, for the calendar tabs, I'm using the Affogato tab from Cloth and Paper. And then I do have another Ollie clip here, which just clips the, I, I like to clip the month calendar to the um, to the divider so that when I pull the divider, it just automatically opens to the calendar. It's just personal preference. Um, this um, vellum is, this particular one is from um, Planner Press and I'll link it in the description and then um, from her shop on Etsy. And then the Affogato tabs from Cloth and Paper, they're blank, so you have to print your own labels. But I love that because if you don't wanna use your side tabs for months, if you wanna use your side tabs for subjects and your top tabs for months, or however you wanna do it, you can just print out what you want on your computer. So I just used clear mailing labels actually, because <laughs> um, mailing labels already are kind of the right size. And then I just cut them down to fit. Um, and so I think I used three by five, yeah, three by five clear transparent mabel, mailing label. And I'll um, remember to mark that in the description. And then, um, and the reason why I use that size is 100% because it's what I had. Um, but it was also perfect because I could, I just printed like the 12 months. I just did like a little table on the label, did my little 12 months, printed it out and you know there you go and so i just cut like i said i cut them down the size and i had i printed two um labels so that i had a front and a back tab and there you go so for this calendar i have just the months of march and april for my work section for my personal section i have march april and may and so um, because for my work calendar from, I use cloth and paper for all of my calendar inserts, but for my work calendar, I use the month 
I use the month and then I use the um, week on four pages. So um, for those of you who might be familiar with cloth and paper, or maybe you're thinking about going with cloth and paper, their paper is absolutely gorgeous. It's white, everything's like white with black ink. It's got, it's so nice and thick. Um, it's just got a really beautiful, beautiful weight on it, um, but it's thick. <laughs> um, so if you're in a classic like I am, you know, to carry the whole 12 months would be would be huge and heavy. And I'll actually show you because I have, of course, my whole 12 months. Um, and so this is the 12 months. <laughs> Um, of it as you can see um, and it's actually actually what's really this is actually a little deceptive it's the 12 months of monthlies it's 12 it's the rest of the you know minus the one month of March of the week on four pages and then also in here is actually my personal planner that I also have and the personal planner that I use is the, um, oh, oh, that's right, May is in here. Um, so I use the weekly vertical for my personal. And cloth and paper, when you order the weekly vertical, you get this cover page, you get your month, and then you get your weeks. When you order the month, the year for the week on four pages, you just get the weeks. You have this cover page, which just gives you the month, the year, and a really nice quote, and then it goes right into the weeks. And then you have, or your kind of weeks, dailies. Um, so, and like I said, it's a week on four pages. So you have your first spread, is your priorities Let's see if i can make that a little clearer for you guys so you have your week priorities and then your note space your month at a glance and then monday tuesday wednesday and then thursday friday saturday and sunday um, this is really great for what I do as an academic administrator because it really, uh, my, my week actually kind of breaks up in kind of really interesting ways. And so I thought I was going to be kind of like a little bit crazy, um, not seeing like a whole traditional week spread and seeing the week on two pages. I thought that was going to make me a wee bit nuts and it turns out that I was completely wrong about that it does not bother me at all to be able to see the week on um, to see the, the week on um, four pages like that it actually has helped me <laughs> in some ways kind of manage my stress level in some ways because if I need to see the whole week, I still have a monthly view where I can see all of the big meetings of my week and big events of my week on like full display, right? And I often have my planner sitting on my desk like this. And so you have, and every month I just do a different kind of color scheme that kind of makes me happy. So these are the transparent dots from um, cloth and paper. And then I use those to kind of do my meetings. I still kind of do a bullet journal kind of feel where I put like my little box so I can check off things. And then these are the circle, transparent circles that were um, in one of the subscription boxes um, that I absolutely love. They're so pretty. Um, so they're, they come in mink, mademoiselle, and dirty chai. Yeah, so this is mink, which is this one. Dirty Chai 
and then Mademoiselle. And so they're absolutely beautiful. I totally love them. If you are gonna get these, make sure that you go ahead. I see a lot of folks asking in different groups and stuff. Um, if you're gonna get these transparent or any transparent stickies, probably need to go ahead and get yourself some Sharpie pens. Um, I use the ultra fine line point and they are perfect. There's, you don't have to worry about waiting for drying time. They don't smudge. They're just, they're perfect for writing on your transparent stickies, um, your print, your page flags, your transparent sticky notes, your transparent, you know, dots, all of it. So definitely get yourself some Sharpies. And then, like I said, because for the monthly, you the week on four pages doesn't have a monthly, so you have to buy the monthly separate, um, which I didn't mind. It makes the planner a little bit more expensive in terms of inserts that you have to purchase, but I don't mind because I don't mind having this note page, which um, I sometimes will use for, I put sticky notes on it and stuff too, um, so it, it's, it doesn't bother me. Um, throughout, I will have like, um, journaling cards and things like that. Um, this layout, like I said, I absolutely love. I try very hard not to schedule things on Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Um, but this layout for the page, I also absolutely love. You have your priority section at the top, and then your to-do section, and then a note section, and then a schedule section. And the schedule section I find works for me because I don't necessarily have, um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever had more meetings or more things that were actually scheduled in my day than there are lines here. And I believe there are nine lines here. And so let's just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight lines here. Um, so, and I've just never had eight more than eight meetings <laughs> that I needed to schedule. And so I've been fine with it. Um, I also like the fact that it doesn't have, you know, it just has the dots. And so you can just write the times in. And what I've been doing, what I started doing is actually putting my start time and my end time on either side of like the little time dots, the little colon. Um, and then for this one, I just use my stickers to kind of indicate what type of meeting or event this is. Um, I don't always do that, but I do sometimes do the little transparent dots. But you can see what I've always started doing is putting the start and end time um, on here, which has really been helpful. So last week I did decide to use a few of those capital chic stickers, just cause I wanted like a little bit of decor in my planner. Um, this is actually the white transparent flag. So you can see how that white transparent flag looks. It basically blends right into the white paper. And yes, I have definitely written over the sticky, over the page flag onto the actual page before it happens. Um, I love using the little pad the meeting note pad from cloth and paper um, to be able to take notes for those short meetings where you know you're gonna need to have a to-do list, you're gonna need to write down some thoughts, maybe some follow-up, but you don't need like a whole classic size piece of paper, right? And so I, what I mean, as you can see, I just punch mine <laughs> when they're done. Um, and then I have my meeting notes right in here. Let me actually go ahead and put that on the little rings like it's supposed to be. Um, and as you can see for this one, this is these notes were all written with my fountain pen. Um, 
these notes were not these notes were written um, with the Straza um, Zebra 3.3 um, pen and so um, like I said I, I love a fine tip that's my preference and so I just like it so in the back of each month is where I put all of the notes for the meetings. Once they're kind of over, the tasks are done, I move things to the back. At the end of the month, I'll move these notes out and I'll put them in the sections where they belong in my um, notebook. And so um, my notebook has top tabs and side tabs, just like my planner. And all of my meeting notes go in there together so that I can keep track because of course in academia we tend to have long range projects and long range activities so you know you might have meetings throughout the year about an activity that will take you know that you start planning for six months in advance and then you'd have the activity six months later you need to keep all those notes together or like I'm on a grant project that's a five-year grant. I'm gonna need to keep those notes together across five years. Um, and so I had decided that what I'm gonna do is take them out of the calendar and put them together where all the notes can be together. Because it's more important to keep the notes together as a subject than to keep them necessarily in the month where they occurred. The other thing that I do, which I love for decor, but also for functionality, is to have my transparent dots in um, my planner for the month. So these are the dots that I decided to use for the month of March. And so I just kind of put them in here and layered them uh, so that I could just have them and I could see them as a little bit of decor. I like them opposite this, um, to this structured uh, dashboard, which as you can see is kind of close in color to the Affogato um, tab. And I just, I love it with this, um, the, you know, adjective definition of structured. This is a really tactile kind of paper. It has a kind of a rough feel. Um, I love it, but if you don't like that <laughs> you might want to if you love the way it looks on the website but you know you're kind of seeing it on the website and thinking that paper might feel like something it definitely does it has some tooth you can definitely feel it um like I said I like it you can probably hear it as well as I'm kind of rubbing on it um it doesn't bother me but you know it's something to think about if you don't like that I do already have April in here um, because I need to kind of have it to be able to see some things in advance and I'll start planning. I'll probably do a plan with me video for the month of April um, and show you guys that. So right now my goal is in my work section, I'll have um, my monthly, the, the month that I'm on and then the next month. Um, will be just the month uh, calendar so that I can just put little stickies on for things that I really need to like have on here um, as I'm in meetings or things like that um, that's that's kind of what I'm leaning towards now I have all kinds of journaling cards from cloth and paper um, and so I decided that I want to start using more of them. So some of them I've punched, some of them I've just paper clipped in here, uh, and then some of them I'll just clip into the cover itself. This dashboard, all the dashboards are either from Cloth and Paper or from Planner Press, and both of these are from Cloth and Paper. They were in the last subscription box. So this would be the February box. These dividers I purchased as a digital download from a company I cannot remember and I did not write down, um, but I will definitely uh, tag it in the description. And I just, I've talked about these before in a number of other videos, I think. Um, and this just digital download, I printed it out on, um, white gold cardstock um, from 
Office Depot, I think, or Staples, one of those. And what I love about this paper is that it just has this like really pretty shimmer. So this is my personal section. So this is my section where I just keep all of my personal stuff. <laughs> um, so I love a subscription box. So I subscribe to the Shaker and Spoon, which I did do an unboxing video uh, on. I'll tag it. It's on my channel. So I've been struggling with what do you use this front page for? Write down the things you need to purchase. <laughs> um, you know, to kind of that go with your stuff. So Shaker and Spoon is a bar box. And uh, so it, they send you everything for the cocktails except the alcohol. So if you're not a cocktail person, but you love a mocktail, it still might be a fun thing to do, especially if you're kind of a mix of people. We have some people who drink and some people that don't. You can still mix up everything without the alcohol and have yourself a nice mocktail. It's really lovely. Um, but I kind of write that information down there. And then, um, you know, for my month, I always lay out my bills and other kinds of tasks. I use the stickers from um, Capital Chic and then also from um, a Happy Planner. And then for one of the things I was kind of trying this month and I'm probably not gonna continue because I don't think I did it this, no, I didn't. This week I, I used this space for decor. Um, so I was trying to kind of do my tracking here and I keep going back and forth on the tracking. I do have a separate habit tracker section, which I'm gonna show in a second. Um, but since I've kind of, because of the ice storm, I've not, I've been away from my home and been away from my printer. I haven't been able to print out my habit tracker like I want. And so I kind of was trying to do it here. And as you can see, I started it, <laughs> but then I didn't actually do it. And so, yeah, I don't really know why, but that's what happened. So one of the things you all know, I've said the entire time with my channel about being a planner is sometimes you try different things. And what I always loved about a bullet journal versus a pre-printed planner like this is that you can try a layout and if you don't like it, then don't keep it. Try a different layout the next week, right? Um, with a pre-printed planner, I have found that this layout I absolutely love, but like what I use that priority section for every week, you know, I try different stuff. If I like it, great. If I, I keep it, if I don't like it, then I get rid of it. Um, and I have no feelings about it <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that didn't work. Uh, so this week, um, for the week of the 15th, I decided to use it to, um, for a little bit of decor, I saw this in the Modern Farmhouse sticker book from Happy Plans, and it was actually laid out uh, vertically, and I just cut it so that I could fit it horizontally in this section. Um, so I just kind of love this idea of live more, worry less, which was something I really needed to, to kind of focus on this week. I love that um, apparently March 19th was Let's Laugh Day, which I definitely did a lot of with friends and colleagues. Um, and so I just, I absolutely love that. And then I just have my, um, because my personal planner, I also do some like research tasks in this planner. I kind of mix my research tasks are in both planners. They're in my work planner and they're in my, um, my personal planner. And so I just have this journaling card, which I actually did punch, but then I also paper clip it. So it comes with this, um, this uh, page marker uh, from week to week. And so it just says the purpose of the first draft is not to get it right, but to get it written, which is a thing I have to constantly remind myself of. <laughs> 
as an academic writer and a researcher and it's a thing I have to constantly remind my students of which I don't mind doing so there you go and then like I said this week I just did a little bit of kind of decor and then um I in the Nautique planner when you buy the agenda you do get some freebies and one of the freebies was a notepad so I just made some notes for something for a video I was watching and just paper clip that there so I can um do that <laughs> and then one of the things um so this is another dashboard um in the February box we got the uh, half page uh, monthly inserts which I'm using for reminders but also to do pre-planning on these little half pages as well which is super nice way to use them <laughs> um, but in my personal section I have my months like I said I have three months worth of calendars in this section so I have March, April, and May, and when April or when March is done, I'll go April, May, June. Um, and then I have the half page um, back here for the entire year, so that if I do need to kind of do a quick at a glance, it's another way to do an at a glance, but it's also a way to put sticky notes reminders for things that might need to get done in the future and like I said those pre-planning moments now one of the things that I can't I'm not sure oh <laughs> I kept the I kept it in here so the vertical weekly lined with the Monday start so this is what I use for my personal planner came with contact pages which I thought was super cute like when was the last time I used contact pages um in a planner but I went ahead and just left them in the back because I was like oh my gosh that's so nice um so in my research section I have my research pipeline and this uh piece of decor is a digital download from AT Art and I wrote on this so I just printed this quote from Zora No Hurston research is formalized curiosity it is poking and prying with a purpose. And I just wrote that on the back there. And then I did my research pipeline. This layout of my research pipeline is exactly the same as I did it in my bullet journal. And it was one of the inspirations of why I wanted to bring my bullet journal and my personal planning into a, a disc bound and out of a book bound. It's because pages like this, and like my future planning log and even like my note pages you know my research notes if i had to use which i often did have to do two three or four bullet journal notebooks bound books a year in order to have a whole year worth of notes and calendars and that meant that i was having to redo these pages it also meant that you know, I might be like at the library or my office or an archive and I didn't have my notes, <laughs> right? Because I've gone to a new notebook. And so it's why I wanted to kind of move my research notes and research notebook into a disc bound um, and move my research planning into a disc bound. So I have my pipeline here. And I, this is just hand drawn. I could have done, I'm a thousand percent sure I could have like done this as a um, Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> right? And I actually, when I teach it to my students, I, I teach it to them using a Google spreadsheet. <laughs> um, but I wanted to line it out for some reason. I think I was just feeling like I just wanted that. So I did this, I printed this cover um, and I didn't wanna cut the paper myself. So this is actually just filler paper from Fancy Plans & Co. And I just printed the cover on one side and then I used this um, is actually a sticker that I printed out on my um, Cricut. 
And so I lined it out. So you have your start date, complete date, project type, submitted to, project title, and then the pipeline here. So you go from great idea to published. And I'll have to note in the com in the description below, um, but I believe this, I based this off of um, the uh, table that's used in the book um, the professor is in. And I, I, ooh, I can't remember her name right now. <laughs> um, but she has a great blog um, and a great book. And she talks about using a research pipeline. And this is based on that. And then just after that, I have my research notes. So all of my half page and my kind of, I guess this would be kind of not really a quarter page, but just my notepad notes. I keep at the front because they are too short, obviously, to have a subject tab. Um, but they're also these, at least these particular ones, don't have us. I don't have a page that is a a full classic size page so there's not a way to do a subject tab for that but to do the subject tabs I just used the circle um, transparent notes from cloth and paper to make my subject tabs and just tabs each subject of just and sections the notes off just so that I know what project those are and I just stuck it on the first page of that and then I have the notes that follow. So I do use a variety of different types of note pages for my notes which I keep extras of in the notes section. Interestingly enough, it's actually not the section where the notes are, it's the section where all the blank paper is. Um, and so I have some half page um, executive notes um, paper from Cloth and Paper. I have both uh, the dot grid and the blank. And then from Cloth and Paper in the February box, this task delegation sheet was in there. And it just, they just sent a bunch of pages of it. And I gotta tell ya, I absolutely love this stuff. And then from Fancy Plans, I have some just blank um, video planner checklist uh, pages, which I use these for the videos that I shoot for my classes as well. And they're just really great like organizational tools. I purchased these because they had everything on there that I wanted to be able to do, right? And what I really was in love with is, you know, you have your a place for your title, your date, your published date, duration, so like it can at least kind of have a guesstimate of how long you want this to be, the title of your video, category, description, and then if it's sponsored, which none of mine are, but if yours are, you can write that there. And then your script or your overview, if you have supplies and costs, which is funny, I did one for this video, <laughs> but I should have looked through my planner a little bit more to make sure. So in the note section, I could say things like the research pipeline is based on, you know, um, and be able to cite my sources appropriately. But again, I'll tag it in the description. So you have things to mention and then your notes area. And then this is the part that I super love, right? Was this checklist. Now, honestly, I was totally thinking about doing something like this, just creating something for myself and printing it out. And then I was like, there are so many planners on YouTube. I can't believe that somebody hasn't come up with something like this that I can either get a, buy a digital download of or buy a pre-printed thing. Like somebody has to have already had this genius idea. And thankfully, um, Marquita Cummings at Fancy Plans is a genius and she already had one. So I bought hers. So thank you. Um, but the video checklist has a section for film, editing, and upload, and then your video promotional checklist for YouTube, social, and blog. 
And then your video stats section where you can write down views, new subscriptions, view duration, watch time, and revenue if you're getting revenue from that video. And I absolutely love this because if you're trying, I, like I said, I use it for both the videos for my classes and the videos that I do for this channel. I started using it for them too. And I love it because it gives you all of your basic things that you need to be thinking about. Also, I'm a communication professor. And so I love it because it's also fo focuses like the basic things you need to be thinking about in terms of just creating a mediated message that you're going to produce and put out in the world. And so I love it. It's a great production checklist. And then I also have the reading logs. These were from Cloth and Paper. I believe these were in either the November or December subscription box. I want to say it was November. Um, and the way that these come, they're printed on both sides. I do like this bold black line. It makes them easy to find in your notebook. But I actually changed mine a little bit because I don't need progress. So here I wrote in, and wait, I can show some. So what I did is I changed this so that it has page number, quote and idea, page number, quote and idea. That's how I decided to do this because when I'm using, I'm using these for research notes um, in order to kind of do like a, a log of research notes. And so this just works better for me. And so um, I have one that I actually used that I can show you how I did it real quick. So for my Zora Neale Hurston. So here I have the title of the book, the author, and then the page number, some quotes here that kind of just help me, um, which the funny thing is when I'm doing like quick notes and I'm reading something that I've either read before or I'm reading for a particular purpose, I don't need a whole long set of notes usually, <laughs> um, which is weird. And this, this particular one, this log was absolutely perfect because I was doing both, right? I was reading something I've read before. I've read um, Hurston's Dust Tracks on the Road before. Um, I was reading for a specific purpose because I was giving a keynote talk and I wanted to find specific quotes because I'd read it before. Um, and I didn't need, um, like, I didn't need to write the whole quote out, but I needed to know the page number and I needed to be able to have like a keyword. Um, and then I just needed to kind of write out some thoughts about it after. So this was the absolute perfect format for being able to do that. I think you can purchase these reading log pages um, on the cloth and paper website. So if that's, you know, kind of a reading log style of note taking is something you wanna do sometimes, you might wanna think about making that purchase. Now my full notes, whenever I have to do full notes on something, research notes, reading something I've never read before, I prefer to either go kind of free form, so using like just a piece of blank filler paper like this, which um, is from Fancy Plans. I like their dot grid filler paper. Um, or if I'm reading something but and I need to be able to take notes and I need a little bit more structure, then also from Fancy Plans, I like her um, Cornell note style uh, filler paper because it gives me just enough structure so you have your kind of I always kind of refer to this more as like the call out section and then you have your notes and then you have your reflections here and then up here is where you would write like your date and your subject and your title of of you know Cornell notes are supposed to be for if you're like listening to a lecture so you would have like your day and your subject up here and then the lecture title and then your lecture notes and then in here is where you write like your questions or your little like keywords along the side here 
Um, and so, but I love them for, you know, just giving like structured notes for something that you're planning. And then sometimes I just really need to have like completely free form thoughts. And so I have just blank paper that this is just regular presentation paper, like the white, white 30, I think it's 32 pound paper from Staples, which I just cut to fit um, for this book. Um, and so I think what I'm gonna try and do is actually find some paper um, that's already this size, so I'm not wasting so much, because it's all, obviously it's gonna be a lot of off cut from that. Um, and so last section, is my habit tracker section and this is the section that you know i i only got to really use for two months like i said i'm away from my printer now and so i don't really get to use my habit tracker section which is a shame because i was just really starting to get into it uh, but the covers are um clip art from um at art and all I did was just put the covers, I used pages on my Mac, and I just picked some clip art, laid it out, and then just, you know, used a font to say what I wanted. Habit tracker, month, year, that's it. Printed it on Fancy Plans paper because <laughs> her paper is already cut to size, and I love the polka dots. I love polka dots in general. On the inside, I knew what I wanted to do was have a cover and then have my habit trackers and then have a spot for notes. And so I just used the calendar, just some calendars. Um, I one of I used to do habit trackers like this when I very first started bullet journaling. I think I did it for like two months and I was like, I can't. <laughs> but I love this, right? I love, I prefer the month and then being able to do like the look at the month for each habit and see like what happened and what didn't like because it doesn't always work out right we have great intentions and it doesn't always work out and so i really love being able to track it this way and i can't wait to be able to get back to my printer and go back to tracking these things like this um, so I wanted to track this year, I wanted to keep track of my steps, my workout times, my water intake, my vitamins, and how many days I closed my rings. And so knowing full well that it's totally possible to get 10,000 steps, but not get 30 minutes of workout and therefore not close my rings. And so I didn't even realize that until I started tracking this in January. And then I was like, oh my gosh, look at all the days where like I got 10,000 steps, right? On these different days, but I didn't get like my heart rate didn't rise high enough for that to count as a workout, as workout minutes, right? And because it didn't count and my heart rate didn't rise enough to count as workout minutes, I didn't close my rings, right? And so it's really been interesting to kind of get that kind of personal visual data as well so that, you know, you can start to make improvements in your life, which I was well on my way for in February. And then the freeze happened. And like, I don't know, it kind of sadly, somehow I got my water intake marked down. It's because I use another app to, to mark my water. Um, but then I didn't, I had so many things going on. I didn't go back and fill in the steps and whether or not I closed my rings, which and my workouts, which obviously I can do because these things are all in my Apple Watch. And so I may go back and fill that in later. Um, the meal tracker, I track what I actually eat in a different app, but here I wanted to just track like whether or not I was actually having breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. And it kind of fell apart. Like everything that happened in February, it was just so stressful. 
And then so what I love about planning though is you can kind of see sometimes the visual of that of that and then you can plan to do better next month <laughs> or ne or tomorrow or next week or whatever <laughs> and so there's always a way to kind of like get back on the horse I guess so that is pretty much it for this month this is a super long video <laughs> But I think when you're kind of flipping through a quarter of a planner and then talking about why you've made certain kinds of choices, those videos always are longer, right? Um, but I hope that you found it enjoyable. And like I said, my goal is to go ahead and do some kind of plan with me. Um, I may, you know, put down in the comments if you want to see something like, how I use um, the sort of the checklist uh, or um, just anything else that you might be interested in. And then, like I said, there'll definitely be a plan with me for the academic planner. I think I haven't ever really done one on how I'm using the week on four pages. And so I definitely want to do, cause this is totally new. This is like a totally, totally new system to me. And so I'll definitely do one with this so that you can see how I use this um, in order to organize my academic planning. And then um, I'll also do one with the vertical weekly so you can see sort of how I use this planner to do my personal planning. All right. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour of my uh, classic planner in my new note cover. All right, thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy the bounty. Bye.